So I'm visiting my parents for the holidays and like last year, I've decided to borrow their kitchen to bring you guys a different kind of video. If you're wondering what EMB I'm using, by the way, it's called uh, going outside. Last year, I tried making three different dishes from the Elder Scrolls cookbook. A mud crab dip, a leek and cheese crostata, and a sunlight souffle. We don't talk about the souffle. And to be completely honest, I wasn't too impressed with the dishes. Okay, to be fair, the mud crab dip was straight bussin' on God. But all three dishes kind of tasted the same and a tiny bit bland at that. In all fairness, my provisioning skill line IRL is only level like seven at best, so I'm sure that didn't help. And the dishes that I selected all called for pretty similar seasonings. This year, I wanted to shake things up a bit. I wanted to craft three provisioning recipes that were all pretty different from one another in terms of their taste to truly experience the entire breadth that the Elder Scrolls cookbook has to offer. So I picked an assortment of dishes that all looked and sounded quite unique from one another. From this selection, I then polled my subscribers on YouTube to help me pick the starter dish. Okay, who voted for Swamp Shrimp? Are you kidding me? You guys disappointed me by picking the Elsewhere Fondue instead of the Bosmer Bites. Man, where are my Bosmer mains at? How could you do this to me? I also polled my YouTube members for the main dish. The Nordic Seared Barnacles absolutely rolled and smoked the competition. And I chose a dessert to make myself. Old Salty Sean, who is an absolute lad and you should all be subscribed to him if you aren't already, mentioned in my YouTube member channel on Discord that he actually made the honey pudding recipe with his girlfriend a while back and that he thought it was quite tasty. I trust Sean's judgment, so I decided that I'd be making that for dessert. All right, let's get started with the appetizer. Today I'll be making the Elsewhere Fondue. This dish was relatively simple to make and called for very few ingredients. This rich and creamy culinary creation normally calls for a sprinkle of moon sugar, but because that is an illegal ingredient, I left it out of the dish. Or did I? About a year ago, my mom actually started making her own bread to accompany the dishes that she and my dad would make. She usually makes sourdough bread pretty frequently whenever I visit, and I asked her if she'd be down to make some to have with this recipe. She was totally down, and I grabbed some footage of her making it. I'll leave the instructions on the screen in case anyone's curious. I made some slight modifications to the quantities of the ingredients used in this dish because I didn't want to make too big of a batch of cheese. Save for the garlic, I used the original amount that was recommended in the book because my parents and I are garlic enjoyers. Alright, so first things first, I split the two cloves of garlic down the middle and rubbed the saucepan with the exposed <laughs> middle as instructed so that the garlic oil coated the sides of the pan. In hindsight, I should have actually probably smeared the garlic oils in the little fondue dish that I'd actually be serving the fondue in. But what can I say? I told you I'm still a novice provisioner, okay? Cut me some slack, man. I then tossed the garlic halves in the pan. In a medium-sized bowl, I whisked together the white wine and cornstarch and then poured this concoction into the pan and brought everything to just under boiling over medium heat. Once the wine was about to start boiling, I removed the pan from the heat as instructed and gradually added some of the shredded Gruyere cheese while continuously stirring and combining everything together. I found that I could still clearly see the individual shreds of cheese in the pan, which told me that it wasn't hot enough as the cheese was evidently not melting properly. So instead of following the cookbook's instructions, I improvised a little and tossed the pan back on the stove over a very low heat as I continued to add in the rest of the cheese. Once everything was thoroughly melted and the fondue didn't look as clumpy as it had when I first took it off the heat, I transferred it into a proper fondue dish and topped it off with a pinch of nutmeg. The fondue tasted delicious. I mean, it's cheese. I'd expect nothing less. It paired really nicely with the fresh sourdough bread that my mom made. My dad made moule frites for dinner that day as well, so dipping the fries in that creamy cheese was chef's kiss. All in all, this was a really simple dish to make and it tasted great. I would definitely recommend it. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10, would make again.
Nordic barnacles are one of my favorite ingredients in Skyrim. Combine them with salmon roe and garlic to create one of, if not the most, expensive potions in the game. Yes, I enjoy making gold in that game too, what a shocker. So I was pretty ecstatic to see that this dish was voted to be the winner. Apparently, the Nords of Skyrim prefer to pair this coastal delicacy with juniper berries. Unfortunately for me, those are not prevalent in my corner of Nern. However, upon consulting the all-knowing internet, I was informed of the fact that the taste of juniper berries is very similar to that of rosemary. Perfect, now that I do have. So I used all of the ingredients in all of their recommended quantities from the cookbook save for the crushed juniper berries. I crushed some rosemary in my family's molcajete to serve as a substitute. Alright, let's get cooking. I combined the crushed rosemary, white wine, and vinegar in a large bowl. I then added the scallops to this marinade and let them bathe in it for about 20 minutes. Because they weren't fully submerged, I made sure to frequently splash some of the liquid over the scallops and I turned them over after the 10 minute mark. While the scallops were marinating, I tossed some bacon in the oven so that they'd get nice and crispy once the 20 minutes were up. After 20 minutes had passed, I added some butter to a pan over medium heat. Once it had all melted and started to bubble, I removed the scallops from the marinade and placed them on the pan flat side down, making sure to keep ample space in between each one. The cookbook recommends searing the, barna the barnacles. <laughs> the cookbook recommends searing the scallops until they are a nice golden brown, which would supposedly take three minutes on each side, give or take. Now, I may have cheated and watched a video of a lady making this very same dish before I gave it a shot, and I noticed that when she got to this stage, her butter had gotten very brown, <laughs> likely from the heat. I'ma be real with you, chief. Uh, it didn't look all that appetizing, so I was reluctant to have the heat so high. As a result, it took much longer than three minutes for each side of the scallops to brown. In fact, it took closer to like, eight or nine minutes per side. I know Gordon Ramsay is having an aneurysm right now. I flipped the scallops over a few times and removed some from the pan earlier than others because some had browned faster than others. I also split a scallop in half off camera and took a bite to test for poison, I mean to test to see if it had cooked properly, and it had. Whew. After removing all of the scallops from the pan and setting them aside, I threw in some minced garlic and let it cook until it got fragrant and golden brown. After about three minutes had passed, I added the reserved marinade and the two tablespoons of maple syrup to the pan and mixed everything together. I let this funky concoction simmer and thicken up for about five more minutes before it was time to plate everything. I crushed some of the bacon from earlier onto a plate, set three scallops on top of this crumble, and then drizzled two spoonfuls of the reduced sauce on top. Not too shabby looking, eh? This dish was actually pretty f***ing amazing. It was very flavorful, and because I used non-salted butter, it wasn't overly salty or anything. The crunchy texture of the bacon complemented the seared exterior of the scallop nicely, and it paired well with its soft, fleshy interior as well. The reduced marinade was also great. It wasn't overpowering, and it added the faintest hint of sweetness, which helped balance the salty nature of the dish. Okay, that's all I've got. I'm not a food critic, but I hope that description did this dish justice. I would also totally recommend making this dish. The only downside was that it took about an hour to make and not much more than a minute to eat. I can't afford to be fucking around with my time like that when I'm busy with university work, cleaning out my guild's goddamn guild bank, and making these videos. So I unfortunately can't see myself making it again anytime soon. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. All right, time for dessert. Wow, I made two Kajiti dishes and not a singular Bosmeri dish this episode. For shame. I'm gonna have to do something about that. I'm not a huge pudding enthusiast. <laughs> like, it's okay, I guess. I'll have it maybe once or twice a year. I don't have much of a sweet tooth in general, actually. I prefer salty snacks, but Sean said that this dessert slapped, so I took his word for it. Making the honey pudding was quite simple. 
I poured some milk into a pot over medium heat and then added some drops of vanilla extract to it. Once it began to boil, I also added in some honey and stirred it around for a couple of minutes to ensure that all of the honey had steeped into the milk properly. After it had, I quickly whisked together some heavy cream, cornstarch, egg yolks, and salt in a medium bowl. As I whisked everything together, I poured in a little bit of the hot milk into the bowl to temper the mixture, and then poured everything back into the pot. I turned up the heat a touch and cooked everything for an additional 5 minutes, stirring all the while, until the mixture got the way I prefer my men. Nice and thick. I then removed the pot from the heat and strained this thickened mixture through a mesh sieve into a clean bowl. I jiggled it a bit for good measure, covered it with plastic, and then refrigerated it for a few hours. The cookbook recommended covering it with plastic right away, but I think that when I make this dessert again, I will let the pudding cool down a bit before I wrap it up. That way there won't be any condensation that builds up next time. If you picked up on my use of the words again and next time, then you've likely already deduced that I quite like this dish. I did. I am a honey enjoyer. I remember getting roasted in my Discord server over a year ago for mentioning that I even drizzle honey over my pizza. That's not that weird, okay? There are motherfuckers out here putting pineapple on their pizzas, SMH in my head. This pudding was simple to make and deliciously sweet. It kind of tasted like a creme brulee, and that is one of my favorite sweet desserts to have. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Thank you for the recommendation, old man. All in all, I was much more impressed with the meals that I tried from the Elder Scrolls cookbook this year than the ones that I had tried last year. They were so much more flavorful, and I can genuinely see myself making some of these dishes again in the future. If I'm ever trying to impress someone, I am definitely making those scallops again, man. Thank you all for sticking around and watching this video, and thank you to those of you that voted for the dishes in this video, even if the Bosmer Bites did not wind up victorious. There's always next time, right? I'd like to give a special shout out to my YouTube members for sponsoring this content and urge you to smash subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you gamers, hope you all had a great time over the holidays and a nice start to the new year. I'll see ya in the next video. Cheers!